One day, in the not too distant future, Elon Musk envisions blasting off from Earth and sending his next generation starship on its way to the moon, Mars, or just to the other side of the world. Several minutes later, the first stage booster used for liftoff makes its way to the launch tower, where it is caught by a specially designed arm and readied for another launch in as soon as an hour. In this video, we will be filling you in with exactly how Musk plans to execute his mission with the help of SpaceX's incredible Starship and super heavy launch system. But before we dive further into this, make sure to press the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss out on any of our latest space niche videos. NASA recently selected Starship as the crewed lander for its Artemis program, which plans to put humans on the moon later in the 2020s. And SpaceX is all geared up for its new mission rollout as the company shoots for an ambitious orbital test. The Starship prototype, known as SN20, left its production facility near the South Texas village of Boca Chica to arrive at the launch pad, joining the super heavy first stage booster that arrived there two days before. And after a slight delay, CEO Elon Musk says that SpaceX is now on track to stack a complete Starship prototype on top of a super heavy booster for the first time ever. Musk revealed that SpaceX had fitted the Starship with a full six Raptors, a first for any Starship prototype. Though Super Heavy Booster 4 technically beat it to the punch with the installation of a staggering 29 Raptor engines hours prior. Together, Ship 20 and Booster 4 represent both stages of the integrated vehicle that will support Starship's first orbital test flight, a mission that's expected to occur before the end of the year. In the interim, a great deal of work remains, but SpaceX is far closer than it's been before, with both an orbital class Starship and Super Heavy near completion. Of course, both those rocket stages have plenty of crucial steps to check off before SpaceX can truly consider them ready for flight. Like all Starship prototypes, Ship 20 will need to complete proof testing after assembly is complete. Notably, Ship 20 is the first Starship prototype with mounting points for a full six Raptors, meaning that it will almost certainly be put through an even more rigorous proof test with hydraulic rams to stimulate the thrust of those engines. The same might be true for Super Heavy Booster 4, which had 29 Raptor engines installed in 14 hours in a spectacular and unprecedented feat of rocket assembly. At least five of its engines appear to have never been static fired, implying that those engines, at a minimum, will likely be removed and sent back to SpaceX's McGregor development facilities for individual qualification testing before being declared ready for flight. The rocket's conical nose section joined it in the high bay later in the evening of the 3rd of August, and SpaceX wasted no time stacking and welding the two Starship halves together early on August 4th effectively completing the basic structure of SN20. After a day of final integration work, Starship SN20 left the bay around dawn on August 5th and took the highway for a brief trip from SpaceX's Boca Chica factory to launch and testing facilities just a mile and a half to the east. On August 3rd, Super Heavy Booster 4 made the same trip from the build site to the launch pad, where it sat on the transporter overnight. On August 4th, SpaceX installed the immense 69 meter tall rocket booster on an orbital launch mount that itself had only been installed less than a week prior. Sitting on top of a fairly tall orbital launch mount, Starship S-20 and Super Heavy Booster 4 will stand at about as tall as 145 meters. Though the booster and ship itself are expected to be just shy of 120 meters from tip to the Raptor tail, once stacked, the vehicle will be the tallest rocket assembled in the history of spaceflight. On top of the tower, a 10 feet lightning rod will ensure that the vehicles on the ground are protected from any lightning strikes. This will ensure that vehicles on the launch pad remain safe in case of any lightning that might occur. As in May last year, with the Starship SN4 prototype sitting right beside the location where a bolt hit the ground. In December 2020, Musk tweeted saying, we're going to try catch the super heavy booster with a launch tower arm, using the grid fins to take the load, save mass and cost of legs and enables immediate repositioning of the booster on the launch mount, ready to refly in under an hour. 
It is suspected that the launch tower with the harness will be used, which will take hold of the super heavy booster after it lowers itself into the arms. The harness will then lower the booster to the landing pad, thus eliminating the need for landing legs and increasing the odds of a safe recovery. As Musk indicated, this catch system is also part of what he hopes will amount to regular trips to space. In the past, Musk has hinted that his long-term mission is to scale up production of the Starship to the point where they can build 100 in a year for 10 years. This fleet could transport 100 megatons of cargo or 100,000 people to Mars every 26 months. Recently described as basically Mechazilla by Musk, the launch tower's supposed catching mechanism is almost a complete mystery. Based on the CEO's comments, the implication is that some kind of giant mobile pair of robotic arms will be affixed to the tower's exterior. When catching super heavy boosters, Musk says those arms will grab the rocket just below its Falcon booster style grid fins. In fact, a prototype of Super Heavy Booster's grid fin section was recently completed at SpaceX's Boca Chica factory and sports what looks like two anchor-like structures that could be used to secure the grapple to the rocket. A bit like the four anchors used to secure Falcon boosters to the launch pad before liftoff and withstand hundreds of tons of thrust, the structures installed between Super Heavy grid mounts appear similar but are instead installed near the top of the rocket. Perfect, in other words, to serve as the anchor points for cranes or clamps. It's impossible that super heavy boosters could also land by resting the flat rear end of those hard points on the tower's arms. At the same time, catching boosters with the flat end of those hard points will give super heavy an extraordinarily narrow window for successful recovery unless its grid fins are also capable of serving as the passive part of the catch mechanism. The tower's main purpose will be to support a crane capable of stacking starships on super heavy boosters, as well as a stabilization mechanism to make that delicate process slightly more viable on the windy South Texas coast. Ultimately, regardless of when they may or may not be ready to be fired, stacked into a fully integrated starship rocket or even launched, the vast majority of orbital test flight hardware is complete or already at the launch pad. The 230 foot tall 70 meters Booster 4 will soon go through a series of pressurization and engine tests. Providing Booster 4 passes the trials, the rocket will then be prepared to send SN20 on a round the world trip. But it's unclear when the rocket will be launched, given that the US Federal Aviation Administration is performing an environmental review of Starship's launch operations, and we don't know when that will finish. It is unclear when Booster 4 and SN20 will fly. Even if the duo sail through all of their pre-launch checkouts and tests, logistical roadblocks may yet keep them grounded. Congrats on having such a great attention span. We have come to the end of this video. Let us know how excited you are for this giant leap into space down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.